me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I don't got a reason to lie. They gave me the key to the sky. But I'd rather open my eyes. Cause that's what'll keep me alive. Something that sees in my mind. What's going on YouTube? We back at it once again with another video for you guys. Um, today we're going to break down a situation that that's near and dear to me. That, that kind of hit my heart. I'm going to be honest with y'all. But this situation really got to me though. You know, as far as me being a fan of the, uh, the Houston Rockets. Let's talk about it. So the 2017-2018 season. They took the Warriors to a game seven. Nobody talks about that, but I will. And even when they was talking about it, they talk about like, oh, this could have went this way or that could have went that way, whatever the case may be. But my opinion, I'm going to break it down to y'all little by little so y'all can get my perspective and y'all can comment in this comment section what y'all think about whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But the things I do want to talk about, I want to get into is missed calls. We're going to break that down first. We got, I think it was like, Nine minutes of missed calls or whatever. You got Eric Gordon drive to the Hogan foul. A lot of contact. A lot right of here. contact on this play. Wow. I think that was a foul. Wow. But how about Tucker inside? Uh, that's that's <laughs> definitely. You got James Harden taking shots and getting fouled. Just by the tone. Harden. He was looking for a foul on Bell. Mike D'Antonio. Him in shooting motion and ain't not calling it. This is the second three in which Bell gets his I mean, arm. That's not a now. swipe through. This is game seven. That's six points you So all of these different things going on, and you like, okay, you know, I'm a fan of the game, and this might change everything, but I feel like that's the media. You know, I want to blame the media. That's one of my first perspectives because it's like, okay, what's going to be a more exciting uh, finals? Warriors and Cavs or the Rockets and the Cavs? So everybody was looking at it like that. I was like, it is what it is. I, I didn't really too much care about the excitement factor. I still would thought it would have been dope, to be honest. That's me being real. But when it comes down to it, you got to think about the money, you know, all of the fans and uh, the history that's being made in these situations with all these different players. They really heavy into, you know, these small statistics. So this person got this many points at this many times at this age and this and that, you know, that, that's how they really, you know, kind of going at things right now. But what's not going, you know, get my attention is the fact that if it's cheating, it's cheating. I don't care how you look at it, how you word it, cheating is cheating to me. That's just my opinion. Like I said, it's an opinion. That's my opinion. So I feel like if they would have caught those calls, it would have made a difference. Meaning, if you are about 12 and you still getting these, you know, they blowing the calls and it's like they capitalizing off the missed calls. And it's like, okay, if you capitalizing off the missed calls, what do you do? Like, can you still find the confidence in yourself? I don't care how much of a soldier they pay you all this money. I don't care what you're doing in life. Somebody just keep beating you over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Or like something's not going your way for the moment, you're going to feel away. It's just the complete truth. Like nobody can't sit here and say like, no, I will feel this way if this happened and this way if this happened. The reality of the situation is they cheated and they know what they was doing. They was looking at it. I'm look, breaking it down. I'm looking at the refs just standing there watching them. And they debating it with each other. They talk to each other like, you know, I think it was some money involved. And I'm going to just keep it all the way real. Only reason I'm bringing this back up. Is because we're talking about the West. We got the Spurs, you got the Rosen, you got uh, the Warriors, you got Cousins, and you got LeBron, and you know, Stevenson, everybody at the Lakers, and all these different players, all these moves that's being made. It's crazy to me. It almost kind of make you feel up and down about the NBA. I'm going to just keep it real. It kind of, you know, your, your excitement, it's fun to watch. Don't get it twisted because I love basketball, but it's still crazy because you don't want to see your favorite players that you've been rooting for go to a team that like you know that you're not used to seeing them all sometimes it is kind of hard to adjust and i'm gonna be real i've been boys and lakers since forever since i was a shorty five six seven years old since i knew that i actually can enjoy basketball like i, I that's my two teams so i ain't never change up or nothing like that i don't care i might watch other teams like even with the rockets i'm a fan of you know good players or whatever i like i like all teams but i just i was rooting for the rockets after everything started narrowing down, you know, when it comes to the postseason. But when we talk about the West, it's like, oh, they go straight to the Lakers, straight to the Warriors, and all that. I mean, OKC still got a fighting chance. They didn't 
I mean, they got cheated too. Where uh, the call with uh, was it Paul George? Paul George got Gobert up in the air. You know what I'm saying? They, that was a bad missed call on the refs right there. So it was a whole lot of funny moments where I feel like, okay, y'all did that. They had to do something to to keep the formula the same, keep that big money coming in. Cause it's like, man, we getting all of this, these fans and everybody watching. That's what it is. It's a money game. But I just wanted to break that down to y'all because when it comes to the Rockets to take the Warriors to Game 7. I don't know if that was like, oh, let's stretch the series out, let them win a few. Nah, I watched those. They fought for those. It was, you know, different situations. It, was, it wasn't it was like just giving to them. They took that, you know? But, yeah, and one thing that I do want to disclose, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, they were supposed to win. Those calls changed every single thing because I heard it was like 26, 27 missed uh, shots in the second half by the Rockets. But like I said, your confidence really drops down when you're in that situation. That goes for athletes that really know, or hoopers that really know. I don't want to hear nobody biased opinion about, oh, no, you're supposed to make that. If you ain't no hooping, you, you know what I mean? You don't really know what it's like when you're on that court, or you're facing a team that's, you know what I mean, of this caliber. Maybe your confidence is blown, now you back to, you know what I'm saying, not really having that strong confidence that got to, to, get, to get you where you are now. It's still tough, man. Nobody can sit there and be like, oh yeah, I would've did this, I would've did that. That's what everybody's saying. I'm not listening to none of that. But when it come down to the Rockets, man, like I said, I feel like this season that's coming up, I feel like it's, they still gonna have the same chance, same opportunity. I feel like I'm, I'm still putting them in my top four. You know what I mean? I know the Spurs got a good system, and I don't know how Pop gonna work with DeMar, cause he ain't really have a good transition, but I ain't gonna knock a, a, a dope player if he feel like he feel a way about his situation and you know what I'm saying? And if it count against him or it goes against his uh, ability or this might be his adjustment year where he gotta get used to the players and the team and the Spurs system, all that stuff you gotta account for, but the Rockets is solid. But let's talk about the mellow in the room. You know, like elephant in the room, but mellow in the room. Let's talk about it. My boy, like, you know what I mean? I, I, I watched him, you know, his up and down roller coaster with different teams, the Nuggets, New York, and all that. When you look at Melo, he's like a, he's still like a, right now he's OG. Let's keep it real. He's a slow paced player. The Rockets play half court ball. And you got, you know, these players that opens up, open up the floor. He's the, one of the dopest one on one players ever to me. Top 10, you know, over the whole NBA history. You know, I don't know. That's that's a uh, you know an opinion and it could be debated, but like I said, with Melo in that system, it spreads the floor a little bit more. I don't know how often they keep him out. I think he should be thrown in at times. Like I don't feel like he should be like solidly just in the game and really running like that. He's cool. I seen the work with uh with OKC, but it's still you gotta think like different systems and you got Chris Paul that's facilitating the ball. Maybe he can create a better situation than Westbrook did for him. That's my opinion. And then you got James Harden, you know, pump faking. So if you pump faking, pump faking, and Melo, uh, who defended Melo, go over to James, you know, Melo can still knock it down. Let's keep it real. Like, it depends on your system. I play on different teams. I'm like, okay, this is the system I need. That's what hoopers do. Like, you adjust. Everybody had these biased things. Oh, Melo, watch, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to make no difference. I feel like that's just another key element. They're just like another piece to the puzzle. But you know what I mean? They swept that under the rug with the Rockets and all of those situations, taking them, taking the Warriors to Game Seven. You know everything. Every it's like a moment in time, and then you forget about it. But not me. I'm looking at it like, hey, who put up the best fight in the postseason with the Warriors? The Rockets did that out of their whole little run. You know what I mean? When they came to them getting these rings, and that's dope. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm gonna call it how I see it. They dope. I ain't gonna knock it. You know, you got the KD situation, you know, he bumping his CJ McCullum, all that stuff, you know what I mean? I focus on the game, Rockets, you know what I mean? My boy Hard MVP, you know how they do it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm still, I'm st I still don't mind the Rockets, but like I say, Bulls and Lakers, if everything narrowed down, I go to the Rockets, and other than that, I'm just watching the game because I love basketball. That's it, so you can, you know, say, oh, you feel this way because you're a fan. It ain't really about being a fan of a certain person or a certain team. It's about loving the game of basketball. So that's why I still watch it. And I know, like I said, it's still watered down for everybody leaving. It's hard to watch somebody that you, you know what I mean, grinded with. Like, man, we almost there. Then just disappear. It's a whole lot of stuff with that. I don't like it. But it is what it is. But it's going to continue. You know, life goes on. I still love it. I'm not going to change it. And, yeah, man, I just wanted to break that down to y'all. 
And uh, yeah, another giveaway coming soon, man. So stay in tune for that. We also got a 1v1 dropping probably the beginning of the week. So yeah, man, stay in tune. Peace, man. Fire Man ETV. Like, share, subscribe, comment, man. Comment. Let's talk about this. We can all talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Share this so everybody can see how I feel, how you feel. We can all, you know what I mean, debate about it. We can talk about this, man. Let me know your opinion. All right, see y'all in a minute. One. Watch your mouth, no dissing me. You know we all saw it. You say I'm fake, that's your opinion. That's just y'all story. Just face the fact I was y'all blessed, but y'all ignored it.